So getting into the news now and what a week it was. Um, we'll start with mentioning that this week was a pretty tragic week. We had multiple, you know, mass shooting events. We'll start with taking a look at what took place during the uh, Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl parade. Do you want to read this headline? At least eight children among 22 hit by gunfire at end of Chiefs Super Bowl parade. One person killed. Yep, so 22 people injured in this shooting. The one person killed was a Lisa Lopez Gelvan. Um, She was the woman that got killed. She was a mother of two, the article mentioned. So please pray for her family. Um, The details, the full details of the shooter... Uh, of the shooters. I believe they've detained two people so far, but the full details really haven't been revealed just yet. So tragic situation, scary, I would imagine, for the folks that are there. Um, So please be in prayer for them. But that was not the only mass shooting this weekend. Do you want to read this headline? New York uh, subway shooting kills one after brawl erupts on train. And... The New York City police said they are searching for a gunman who opened fire on a subway train and station platform in the Bronx on Monday, killing one man and injuring five other people. Says a 34-year-old man died while five others taken to hospitals sustained non-life-threatening injuries. The victims ranged in age from 14 to 71 and included four males and two females. Yep. So in this instance, last I checked, the shooter or shooters, I think, I don't know, are still at large in New York. So I don't think they've caught them just yet. But again, pray for the families that were affected in New York. Again, that's a scary situation. Trapped in a subway. Yeah. Guns start going off. There's not many places to get out of there. So that's pretty scary. Um, But then lastly, there was a shooting that took place at the Lakewood Church which is, of course, where Joel Osteen is the pastor. I believe it's the third largest church in the country. Would you want to read this headline, honey? Police identify uh, Janessa Moreno as shooter at Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church. Um, At approximately 1.53 p.m. Sunday, Moreno, carrying an AR-15 rifle, pushed past a security guard and walked into a hallway at Lakewood Church with a boy Uh, the Houston Police Department said during a Monday news conference. Over the next 12 minutes, Moreno opened fire in the hallway, exchanged gunfire with two off-duty officers who were providing security at the church and was fatally injured, said the Houston Police Department. Moreno was confirmed dead at 2.07 p.m. The boy was taken to Texas Children's Hospital, where he is in critical condition. Um, That boy is is her son. Yeah, that's what the article mentions, that that boy that was killed was her son. So, you know, of all the shootings, we know more about the shooter in this case. As Nikki mentioned, her name is Genesee Moreno, though in the past she went by Jeffrey Moreno Carranza, I guess. Um, Some of these articles say she had a long criminal history with a history of mental illness as well, I read. Um, And then, again, her seven-year-old son. I guess, was the one that was killed in the shooting, though they don't know exactly who fired the shot that killed the boy just yet. So I'm sure more is going to come of this shooter, who they were, why they did what they did. It just makes me wonder why she brought her son. Like, did she think she wouldn't get shot at because the kid was with her? Like, she was using her kid as a shield almost or to deter the security guards from shooting at her. It doesn't sound like it because, you know... Probably could have been much more catastrophic what happened there, you know, walking into a church, shooting, you know, people are not expecting to be bugging out of a church, you know, because of uh, an active shooter or whatever. So I don't know why she would have brought the son. Some of the articles mentioned that she had like family kind of turmoil, I think, with a husband or a a significant other or something to that effect. Don't really know yet. I'm sure. We may find out. I mean, who knows? She's dead now, but... um, It's very strange to plan to do something like that and bring your kid. 
Well, and again, if she has a history of mental illness, yeah. you know, who knows how far reaching that is. But, you know, those make for a pretty tough week, obviously. Three sort of mass shooting events, if you want to call them that. And that's without looking at just the normal chaos and destruction that takes place all across this nation basically every week. It was just another yawner of a week in Chicago where 18 were shot and one were killed in just your random, you know, late winter, early spring Chicago gun violence. Uh, this stuff barely makes the national news anymore. That, you know, this just happens regularly in Chicago. Mm. So, you know, a lot of prayers to go around. Uh, and it's hard to make anything of this without all the facts. You know, we're still sort of waiting for facts to come out on this stuff. Why these shootings happened, um, you know, a lot of it's still unclear. As I said, with the um, Kansas City shooter, I guess they have some people in custody. Are they the right people? Who knows? Uh, more will come out on that, I'm sure. But, you know, I think some things are clear. And I think we have a dangerous mental health crisis in America. And we... <laughs> I think it is painfully clear that we do not have the leaders that are willing or able to fix it. Uh, I think it was RFK Jr. I heard him point out the drastic decline in mental health facilities in this nation since the 1950s, which seems to be pretty accurate. I went and tried to find some information on this, and I found this article from NPR. This is dating back to 2017 talks about the loss of U.S. psychiatric hospitals led to a mental health crisis. So again, back in 2017, doubt things have gotten much better. Right. Um, do you want to read this paragraph? It says, a severe shortage of inpatient care for people with mental illness is amounting to a public health crisis as the number of individuals struggling with a range of psychiatric problems continues to rise. And it says a study published in the, the journal Psychiatric Services estimates that 3.4% of Americans, more than 8 million people, suffer from serious psychological problems. Yep. And then down here a little bit further, if I can find it. Uh. Yeah, it says right here. The percentage of people with serious mental uh, mental illness in prisons rose from 0.7% in 1880 to 21% in 2005, according to the Center for Prisoner Health and Human Rights. So it went from almost nothing to, to yeah, almost a quarter of the prison oh. population. And then this article here from Psychiatry Online. Oh, where was I looking? Yeah, it says uh, psychiatric inpatient treatment in the United States from the early days of family care in Dorothea Dix. I'm not sure who that is. Efforts to grow the system through its peak in 1955 at more than 500,000 beds due to federal policy changes, the development of antipsychotic drugs and the rise of managed care, among other factors, that trend turned downward. And between 1970 and 2014, the resident population in state psychiatric hospitals declined from about 370,000 to 40,000 and stays grew shorter. So that seems like a huge decline in the amount of people that are in our mental hospitals. So, you know, we don't need hospital treatments. Just give the people some drugs, get them back to uh, society. That seems to be the current plan. Yeah. One of them said that they only stay for like 72 hours in the hospital and then just send them on their way. Yeah. So just get them in, get them some drugs, get them out. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't work, just throw them in jail or prison where they most certainly won't get the help that they need. Um, so I think NPR was right in 2017. You know, we are in a mental health crisis. It hasn't gotten better. These mass shootings are evidence of the fact that it hasn't gotten better. Um, I don't necessarily know what all these numbers mean, right? I'm not a 
statistician dealing with mental health crisis. Um, so I will defer to RFK Jr. Um, as to what he stated about the crisis. So if you think that the numbers are inaccurate, well, go and tweet RFK Jr. Um, but I think we know that we're in a mental health crisis. Like, just open your eyes and look around. Uh, come to Albuquerque. Take a brief look. You will find out pretty quickly. It's impossible to miss. And what's so sad, um, but also so scary, is that our leaders are supporting and promoting this crisis. Mm. You know, they're lifting up the mentally ill as heroes for their illness, basically. And then you couple that with our leaders, both politically and culturally, that are just so bent on dividing us, you know, just so bent on stirring up strife amongst us. You know, they push that fear porn, you want to call it that, 24-7 on the public airwaves, on social media. And it's like they're purposely driving this crisis, you would say. They're yeah. preying on people with mental illness is what it seems like. It's just, like they cause, yeah, it's like it's causing, it's kind of like it's a cycle. Causing well, fear in the... Yeah, I mean, it's like I they're people, bombarding them with fear, with panic, anxiety, to the point where they go and commit this level of violence. I and then people instead, just have a... They just have, people just have a twisted view of other people and of the culture, despite. Well, they do, I think. And again, part of that is just human nature. But I think part of that is being bred and propagandized into us. Well, our social media. Yeah, they're definitely using that. I mean, they just, don't. I mean, our kids, we, we always talk about the teens. I mean, even younger than teens, like the, just through social media alone, you know, kids who the whole transgender craze going on, like really easy to just convince people of something that's not true. And yeah, I mean, we're definitely areas. seeing it in more walks of life than just sort of the violence, definitely in the sexual right, it's in, confusion. It's in everything is what I mean. Like, but they never walk it back or cool it down. Like, a mass shooting happens and they're never like, whoa, 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 let's take it down a notch. We're all countrymen. We all want the same goal. They never do that, right? Instead, they're just like using the tragedy that drove people to cause some crazy, you know, mass shooting or whatever. And then they just use that tragedy to drive the wedge even deeper. Right. Like to, to make cause more panic, more, more fear, paranoia, more anger, yeah. more anxiety, more stress. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. They're not trying to calm things down or, you know, ease the But they'll the blame stress. it on, like what another article says later, but they'll blame it on, you know, religious people, people who supposedly oppress others and. Right. I mean, it'll it be is, they'll shift the blame. Somebody racism, else. classism, yeah. sexism, transphobia, you know, all these mm -hmm. different things. They never just say, let's tone it down, guys. Let's let's remember that we're, you know, all marching together and, you know, on this thing called America. But like they never do that. Right. It's just drive the wedge deeper. And it's really I think it's a truly wicked thing that our leaders are doing to the American populace. Um, and then I think if you couple that with our nation's loss of faith, and I don't know what we could possibly do to stop this. Like we can talk about it and rail about it and, you know, tweet about it, whatever makes you feel good. But like with a loss of faith, I don't know what you're going to do to stop this. Like we've lost our faith in a large part in this nation. So rather than going to the source of healing, which would be God, like that article said, we kind of just turned towards alchemy. I mean, pharmaceuticals, if you want to call it that, you know, pharmaceuticals and materialism. Mm -hmm. And what's the result then? Pretty tragic, right? I mean, this is not an uncommon week to have, you know, we could essentially do mass shooting stories almost every week, whatever they thought they're trying to do to reduce the mental health population it ain't working, especially when you take God out of the society. Yeah. You know, with a loss of faith, I think you just lose the ability to see the world as it really is. And as I was, you know, I went and found some articles just kind of thinking about this, you know, we don't see the world as it really is anymore. Um, 
we're just fed lies, you know, like Nikki was talking about with the transgenderism. We're just taught to believe lies, you know, support the lie, fight for the lie, mm -hmm. kill for the lie, all these sorts yeah. of things. It's just, it's not reality. And this article is from CNN. Um, do you want to read this paragraph? He says, when we hear about bad things happening, especially when lives of many are lost or damaged at the hands of a few, we need to remind ourselves that people are generally good. We are hardwired for goodness. Easier to recognize this fact when you think of children. And then I, I highlight like this other part that stood out to me, and I kind of we brought it up a second ago. He says, the more governments and individuals do to reduce the conditions that cause the darkness in which violence breeds, and then he lists wars, poverty, systemic racism, xenophobia, homophobia, religious intolerance, bullying. He says the fewer acts of horror on the news we will have to process. So the, the, the condition that causes the darkness. He's got this weird philosophy. So darkness breeds when these all these things he lists. So poverty right. and systemic racism and homophobia. When you see mass shootings on TV, <laughs> it makes people want to commit mass shootings. You're like, well, the mass shooting already happened. It's weird. It, it does. It's completely 180 degrees wrong <laughs> that we are hardwired for goodness. We are inherently wicked and depraved. And we used to know that. Our founders knew that, which is why they set up so many guardrails. Mm -hmm. But we've forgotten that because we've turned away from God. Um, and since we are our own gods, you know, we have to believe that we are inherently good. We don't want to be bad gods, do we? It is uh, funny how atheists usually blame the evil in the world on religious people. It's just weird. I'm like, really? Is it? Is it really religious people that's nope. that are doing all these wicked things? Like it is not. That is another another lie that they just swallow because it makes them feel good. Um, but that article, like, we don't understand people anymore. Uh, here's another article. This <laughs> one is amazing. It says nearly half of Americans think they're a better person than everyone they know. Well, why wouldn't they in the land of pride? But this, uh, it says, in a recent survey of 2,000 U.S. residents, 81% say they believe that humankind is inherently good. Maybe they don't watch the news. I that don't know. It is a <laughs> ludicrous number, and it's a conclusion you can only get to if you don't believe the Bible. Mm -hmm. So how can a nation that has 65% supposedly Christians but 81% believe the opposite of what the Bible right. teaches. The answer is, we can't. <laughs> Those numbers aren't both true. And the one that's a lie is the 65% Christian. Um, we've discussed this number on the show before here, but only 6% of this nation has a biblical worldview, which means only 6% of this nation is Christian. The other 59%, who knows? They just... Jesus is our homeboy, I suppose. It's some of that. So we just wanted to give you some truth about the state of humans <laughs> since CNN and studyfinds.com or .org won't. They'll lie to you. So do you want to read Romans 3.10? Yeah. <laughs> there is none righteous, not even one. Especially not 81%. Um, how about Romans 5.12? Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. We're all sinners. How about Psalm 51.5? Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Yep, and that is King David, the man after God's own heart. If he was conceived in sin, what hope do you have? Uh, and then here's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. Mm. And we used to know these things. 
these scriptures we used to know and we used to sort of base our life on, our understanding of the world on. Um, but I guess, you know, we believe that all we need now is a new iPhone, some high speed internet, and man's going to live in harmony forever. It just isn't true. And it's not true because it's not biblical. Um, Proverbs chapter 30, verse five says, every word of God proves true. Every word of it. Romans 3.10, 5.12, Psalm 51, it's all true. And again, we used to know that. Um, but also with the loss of faith, I think we've forgotten about spiritual warfare and mm -hmm. demonic attacks that wreak havoc on our nation. Like it's somehow we've become too rich. We're so rich that Satan can't even ravage us anymore. Or that Satan can't overcome the modern workings of alchemy. I mean, medicine. Uh, but Christ himself told us that some ailments were demonic. Yep. Um, do you want to read Matthew chapter 17, verse 14 through 21? Oh, sorry. It's oh, right there. Yeah. Um, and when they came to the crowd, a man came up to Jesus, falling on his knees before him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he has seizures and suffers terribly, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. And Jesus answered and said, O oh, you unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked him, and the demon came out of him, and the boy was cured at once. So demon. seizures. Never, you never hear that just that seizures could be demonic. Yeah, and I mean, it wasn't the only thing. You know, Acts chapter 10, verse 38 says, says, you know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So there is real spiritual warfare, um, and not the fake, you know, spiritual warfare, whatever that is, um, you know poltergeist and this sort of stuff but well, the real i mean go watch nefarious <laughs> right what do you There's, think about all the you know so many people who are on drugs that alter alter your mind is that like an open door to the demonic to enter like we're told to be sober minded but are there things that people do that kind of just open the door like if you're not in your mind, is that like inviting demons to just take over? Is that yes. why like... If you smoke that marijuana, you'll become one of them homosexuals. <laughs> one of those like old 1950s commercials, like for don't do drugs. No, I mean, I would guess some. I mean, sure, I would assume. Because there's just so many people who just say and do just some bizarre stuff. And I don't think that they do it because they're on drugs in the moment. Like, they're just, it just seems like something someone would do that's Well, if you remember possessed. the story that uh, Jeff told us, you know, he's one of our pastors. He does evangelism down in kind of the, you know, more drug riddled parts of our town. And he kind of talked about some, you know, time when he was out doing evangelism and he could just see some like i don't know if it was like a drugged up dude or a homeless guy or you know mentally ill whatever not that homeless guys drug addicts and mentally Ill are all the same but i don't know what the guy was but he kind of talked about how he was kind of you know going over some verse or some word that he was wrestling with when he was studying greek and he was kind of just a mental you know struggle that he was having throughout the day and this guy all like messed up just walks over to him looking all angry Jeff's like, oh man, it's about to go down. And the guy just walks up to him and like tells him the Greek word in like perfect fluent Greek that he hadn't even voiced out loud. He's like, what did you say? And he said the Greek word again and then just like walked away. And he's like, what in heaven's name was that? Like that had to have been something spiritual. Yeah. You know, so I think drugs can probably, um, probably open you up to the demonic realm. I'm sure. Why not? I mean, right. It, it lowers your inhibitions. It, mm -hmm. um, impairs your mind. 
um, which I imagine weakens your faith. I mean, all sorts of that stuff. And then not to mention, it just puts you in seedy and demonic environments. So I'm just saying a lot of the mental health crisis we have, it's not just that they were first having a mental health crisis. It's like the drugs led to the de- demonic, led to the mental health crisis, or those two switched well, around. Like, like they're all a, connected. Uh, what do you call one of those... Uh, like graphs where it's like the three overlapping circles. Yeah, probably, yeah. I don't know what those are called anymore. I think but, it's uh, connected, yeah. I Because I wouldn't... Be that, you know, maybe somebody, the drugs led him to a demonic, you know, uh, influence that led him to mental illness. Yeah. Somebody might have been mental illness, led him to drugs, led him to demonic. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. I'm sure... I wish I could think of the name of that chart. Anyways, let me know what that chart's called in the uh, comments below. the overlapping below. circles. I know what you mean. But... Yeah. I say all that to say this. That's a long intro to say this. Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. Um, We should expect this to get worse. Especially, you know, that being like attacks on Christians. We should expect that to get worse. Because we have no solution to stop it. So the only reasonable explanation or expectation is that it's going to get worse. If we have no reasonable solution to stop it, we should expect it to get worse. Yeah. So, sure up your faith. Stay prayed up, stay in the word. I fear that our time of sort of the comfy, lazy, take everything for granted Christian living might be coming to an end. Uh, Maybe not immediately, but maybe sooner than we think. It's also an exciting time because we're going to hopefully see people wake up and more people really take their faith serious. Like it'll be a joyful time for Christians. Because we know this world isn't our home. Like, it'll be trying times, but... What did I just hear? I heard a quote about from Samuel Rutherford, the great Puritan preacher and um, writer. And he said, I think I might get it wrong, but I think it's right. He said, affliction is the cellar where Christ keeps his choicest wine. You know, that's where you kind of get the, the surest, closest gr- glimpse of Christ and him being involved in your life is when you're suffering through affliction. Yep. And we may be just so blessed as yeah. to see Christ clearly in our day. Um, praise God I know. for that. So it's a blessing, really. Do you have any final thoughts on the mass shootings this weekend? Um, or just the inherent goodness in all people? Any thoughts on nah, that? Nah, we can move on. <laughs>